I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Oliver Gale, the CEO of Panther Protocol. I'm really excited to dive into what Panther is working on. Can you kick us off with just an overview of Panther Protocol and some of the solutions you're looking to bring into the DeFi space? So Panther can be described as a meta protocol. It is a protocol that can be deployed on multiple smart contract blockchains, public blockchains. And the problem that we're addressing at the core is one of transactional privacy see transactional sovereignty, surveillance resistance. There are a number of different ways to say a number of different reasons for wanting the properties of privacy, not least of which is the protection of alpha and negotiating rights for individuals and institutions. By alpha, what I mean is a competitive advantage. It might be an information edge when you're trading with a DeFi protocol as an individual or as an institution. As a protocol, as a community, are building solutions for public blockchains to enable any user to transact privately in a deep environment. I was looking into the details of these privacy solutions and I saw that you're integrating zero knowledge proofs with DeFi. Can you talk about that technology and why that's the specific solution needed to integrate with Panther? Zero knowledge proofs, a form of cryptography which have already begun to, but which we see as being a technology which continues to transform the very fabric of the entire financial infrastructure. But in addition to that, it's going to transform the relationship that we have with enterprises, with governments, and with each other around data. What a zero knowledge proof is, is essentially it's proof that a certain condition has been met that a prover can submit to a counterparty. The counterparty is the verifier. The verifier can validate the state without the prover having to disclose any of the underlying information. And so there's a zero knowledge disclosure that's made to the verifier by the prover. In simple terms, this could apply to the finance use case to something like your identification or verification process. If you look on the global spectrum of where we are with open banking frameworks, the European Union and their PSD2 standards are ahead in many ways of US and American standards, generally North, Central, South American standards. The more modern regulatory framework allows one financial institution that has verified a user to pass the KYC information or proof of that verification over to another other institution without the other institution having to redo all of the onboarding process. Doing transactions in DeFi on public blockchains, there's different blockchains, but most of them, you can just go ahead and look at transactions and see the balances, see the history of the transactions right on the blockchain right there. That's something that is crucial information. Somebody that's trying to make a transaction private, I was looking into Panther and I saw that you're creating something called Z assets that I'm guessing have privacy ingrained in the assets. Are those synthetic assets or maybe you can explain more surrounding the privacy of the coins? So Panther has a decentralized model, but there's a hub and spoke component to it where we're building Panther extensions on pair chains like Ethereum, like Solana, like Cardano. And then we're building a private interchain DEX to allow routing of transactions seamlessly across an interconnected DeFi, interoperable connected DeFi ecosystem. Using Ethereum and ERC20 tokens as the first example, what Panther enables you to do is deposit, say, a DAI token or an ETH token to an on-chain vault, self-custodial vault, where the assets are securely held and custodied by the protocol itself and a corresponding one-to-one -one fully backed Z asset. So in this case, it would be ZDAI or ZE is minted. Panther is rolling out on layer two using Polygon in the first instance, and the Z asset is issued on uh, Polygon's layer two. So your ZE or ZDAI is now represented on this ledger and you have a zero knowledge proof of ownership. What Panther is bringing to these assets is the additional property of privacy. We're not trying to change the risk profile. We're really saying today you use DAI, tomorrow you can use ZDAI. Today Today you use ETH, tomorrow you can use ETH. That's what the Z asset type is. And one of the beautiful properties about, aside from the privacy between them, users can actually clear and set no transactions on the layer two in a very low cost fashion. With those Z assets, there's also the Panther Protocol token as well, which is the ZKP, Zero Knowledge Proof token. I would love to know how that integrates onto that network. What are the main functionalities that it's going to provide for, for the privacy uh, DeFi solutions? When we set out designing Panther, there were a couple of building blocks, more than a couple that we chose. One was 
to focus on governance, another is to focus on composability, a third is to focus on usability, and the fourth is efficient privacy. When it comes to usability, we don't want to force users to hold ZKP in addition to whatever asset is in their wallet that they want to transact with. The ZKP token is not a gas token. It is a utility token. It's a utility token because it's required for voting and there's incentivized voting where you're economically rewarded for participating in the governance of the Panther protocol. Two, the ZKP token is used for something called privacy mining, which is the game theoretic mechanism for building the privacy set. Privacy miners are rewarded in ZKP for providing assets into the pool to build the anonymity set. The ZKP token is used to bond assets for the interchain DEX. So there's this bonding requirement where you're rewarded for bonding ZKP against the collateral held by the interchain DEX, which will be a massive driver of lockups and value for the protocol.